Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Richter, President of Brightcore Energy. Uh, welcome to the first video in our geothermal series. Um, we're going to be discussing the fundamentals of geothermal. Today, cities everywhere are facing challenges of reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. In New York City, for example, buildings emit approximately 70% of the city's greenhouse gas. Uh, for 55% of those emissions, HVAC is the culprit. In order to reduce greenhouse gases in cities, we must address the impact of heating with fossil fuels and adapt to a cleaner method of heating and cooling our buildings. Back in 2019, New York City introduced Local Law 97, which sets carbon limits on large buildings. Uh, these carbon emission reductions are primarily driven through electrification of heating via heat pumps. Uh, one type of heat pump technology which is underutilized in New York City is geothermal energy. Um, this sounds odd given the uh, density of the buildings, but the heating and cooling for geothermal energy is not a novel technology. It has been used in the U.S. and Western Europe for quite a bit of time. I'm here with our VP of Renewable Heating and Cooling and resident geothermal expert, Dave Hermiton, to talk more about how geothermal works and how it plays into the advancement of clean energy and electrification of heating and cooling. Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I'm really happy to be here today. Um, first, to be clear, we're not talking about the, the type of hot rock geothermal that runs steam turbine power plants, but we're talking about ground source heat pump geothermal. Here in New York, most of New England, starting at about 20 feet down to about 1,000 feet deep, the Earth's ground temperature is between 50 and 60 degrees all year round. Uh, the reason for this is mainly solar radiation that doesn't reflect back to the atmosphere and heats the ground. Uh, geothermal systems leverage this temperature by extracting heat from the ground in the winter to heat buildings and reject heat to the ground in the summertime to cool buildings. And, and while 50 degrees doesn't seem cold, it seems a bit cold to heat your building, 50 degrees is much warmer than the, the 20 to 30 degree temperatures uh, of a northeastern winter. Uh, ge geothermal heat pumps boost this 50 degrees from the ground to a normal indoor temperature of about 70 degrees. Uh, in the summertime, indoor heat's removed from the building where it's rejected to the ground, keeping the indoor temperatures cool. There's an acronym that some people may or may not have heard, um, BTES. And BTES stands for Borehole Thermal Energy Storage. And, and Borehole Thermal Energy Storage is a way to leverage um, a, a geothermal bore field or a geothermal system's ability to 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 retain heat. And when you're looking at the seasonal use of a geothermal system, there are a couple of opportunities. So there's the opportunity to pre-charge a bore field for for heating or, or cooling. Um, in, in the U.S., this 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 approach to bore field use um, has been been used um, and and somewhat perfected based on the studies that were developed in Sweden. Um, the 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 best way I could explain this is to be able to optimize a bore field for for heating. Something that could be done is that the 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 system if the if the system is configured as a hybridized system, you can allow more heat to go to the bore field in the later summer months and drive up the bore field temperature. And what that does is you know, that heat can be used into the winter. And when we talk about energy storage, we're talking about low temperature ambient uh, uh, circulating fluid or, or low temperature ambient systems. And, and this. It is, I guess, kind of considered like you know, within the realm of, of Gen 5 uh, uh, he heating and cooling systems. So we're able to see efficiencies that are improved by about 10 to 15 percent, which on an annual basis is pretty significant. We're also doing some things with uh, being able to pre-charge systems on a daily basis to um, to reduce peak demand. 